So, a while, a few days ago, I did a video talking about, like, how Marvel has this thing, and it's more of, like, talking about Spider-Man, of how Marvel editors just refuse to let Spider-Man grow as a character, and refuse to let him, you know, get older, and this is a, a running thing with Marvel. Like, it talks about, like, characters for legacy and whatnot, but it barely does anything with its legacy characters. Hell, the, do you guys remember when they did an event where they killed off all of their, le like, 90% of their legacy characters? Yeah, that was a thing. After doing a whole co uh, comic of having these characters celebrated and wanting to have them go do more things, they just killed them all off and it, like, uh, because Hunger Games was cool. That's really it. They just wanted that Hunger Games money and took off with it. And that kind of made me think about one thing that DC will uh, apparently will always have over Marvel. It's just one thing they'll have over Marvel every time. And that is Legacy. Legacy for DC Comics has been never more prevalent than it is now. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with, Mar uh, with Marvel and not allowing a lot of Legacy characters to, you know, grow, to do more. Yes, you have Captain America who adopts a son. You have characters who do have children, but it's very few and far between. And even then, they get ret sometimes they get retconned out, or they turn into villains and they have to die. Looking at you, 90% of X-Men characters. Um, so I never really got why the fear of aging your characters is so prevalent in Marvel. I never understood why it has to be that way. I never understood that. Meanwhile, at DC, you have Superman and a healthy relationship with his wife and ha teaching his son valuable lessons while he's growing up to be a Superman in his own right. You have Batman, who has an entire family and also a biological children a child. Marriage is kind of a problem, but it's. I feel like one day... I honestly feel like one day we're going to get, like... I have no doubt in my mind that DC Comics will allow Batman to get married to probably Catwoman. 90% can't. It's going to be Catwoman. That's kind of the thing, isn't it? Like, you have... Um, you, like, that's the thing. is, And also, The Flash, he's happily married, has kids, and they have grandkids... And they've adopted other members in the family. Oliver, he's his family's kind of messed up due to the, a lot of the stuff that happened in the DC reboots and whatnot. But what can you do? Um, hell, a lot of like a perfect example of characters growing into their own is Dick Grayson, Nightwing. Um, it's always been a thing that has that has boggled my mind that Marvel just refuses to let certain characters grow up. And it's even more agonizing that they try their hardest to be like the movies. It bothers me to no end that they always consistently try and try again to be really hard at being like the movies. I mean, I talked about today in my Midnight Suns review that really they were so egregious. It's one of the most egregious things of seeing Agatha Harkness go from this old woman to a young woman. Why? Because she's young in them, she looks young in the in the in the one division, yeah, in the upcoming Ag um, Harker, Agatha Harkness series, and she's gonna be a major villain soon. Why? Because Agatha Harkness is a villain in the MCU, so we gotta make it a prevalent character, I guess. And uh, yeah, Black Panther, we make major changes to and retcons to those characters, and don't let it. Um, Black Panther be with Aurora because it's not in the interest of being like the movies. Like I said, the two, I feel like the two biggest ones in, in Marvel Comics that really feel like they're trying, they're being egregiously changed by Marvel um, is Gar to be like the movies, I mean, is Guardians of the Galaxy and Black Panther. Um, so that's kind of, and yeah, and, and like I said, like getting back to Spider-Man, the editors just refuse to let Spider-Man not, never not be a man-child. That's, it's always, it's until like the editors wake up and be like, hey, Spider-Man is, is never like selling, but hey, it'll hate, people will hate read Zeb Wells' comic and to the point where people may threaten his life, but hey, it'll make us money. 
You see what I'm saying is that that's what I'm... Uh, now, I'm not saying this is like, oh, I'm a DC shill. If you look at my library and in, in my the closet I've converted into a library, you'll clearly see there's a Marvel to DC difference. <laughs> a major Marvel to DC difference with the bookcases. Even my girlfriend has pointed out time and time again, I'm not... For, if for all Marvel or all DC, it's just for some reason I have a way more Marvel books than DC. But it's always been a thing to me that I that is that has always been a thing, and I think that's always been DC's thing is that they can't like legacy is always going to be their thing. Why do you think they always push Teen Titans whenever they can? Why do you think they you know really hype up Super Sons? Because legacy is always going to you know. Their legacies are always going to be a major factor for these characters. And they're not afraid to age up their characters because their readers are getting old. Like, that's their thing, is that their readers are getting older. So, yeah, you might as we might, they might as, they're like, fuck it, we'll just make Sp Superman's a dad now. And he's in a happy relationship with Lois. Bendis is like, can I ruin that relationship? No, shoo, shoo, go, go. Your event, uh, you were a horrible mistake. You were a... Get out of my way, you fat, balding piece of shit. Get out of here. <laughs> but can I still write... No, no, get out of here. Can I write Batman Universe? Okay, that was a good book. Yay. <laughs> Smiles and Bendis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, but that's the thing, is that just... It's... Um, DC is in no way, shape, or form... Like, hell... One of their earliest comics, the Legion of Superhero, is all the Legion of Superheroes, is always a, has always been about legacy and the imprint that the the classic superheroes have. To further that point, the JSA is a perfect example of that. The like they were the JSA was the first generation of heroes. Then you had the Justice League. Then you have you know this newer era of Justice League and so on and so fucking forth. It, it you know, I don't know why. And at no point the editors are like, you know... And it, DC is, is also... Does get a little... Uh, like, I will say that they will sneak in, like, trying to be like the movies. And for all intents and purposes, there's the always the risk that when James Gunn's era of comics really starts hitting the gas, it's really going to be interesting to see how much of the movie influence is going to affect the comics. Now, James Gunn did say that there is going to be a lot more, like, talk between them and comics, so maybe Gunn has made sure that, like, he wants to keep them separate, but who knows. But for right now, DC has been less egregious. Really, it's only been Suicide Squad and maybe a few other character, lesser characters here and there. But I always have that fear that maybe they'll try to be, like, the DC films when they... Because, yeah, the DC films were not popular. Yeah. So... That's probably what affected it. So we'll, we will see what happens in the future for the DC films. If they get more popular and if they get more interesting, then I have that fear that they'll do the same thing Marvel's trying to. Uh, Marvel always does and try to make it like the movie. And, yeah, make it like the movies, which you don't need. But for right now, they have always been concerned about legacy. I mean, hell, um, they clearly give no shits about making Superman, the two title characters, dads. And in one of them having a stable relationship. The other one is trying his best. He can't get over his trauma. I'm sorry. But, it, but I do feel like one day we will get an actual marriage between Bruce and Selina. I, I guarantee you that that's what might happen. But, it, but for Marvel... I just feel like they should take some notes for DC on this and let their characters get older. I mean, Wolverine has a whole plethora of children that are usually, like, just used cherry-picked for X-Men teams these days. Who knows how many of them will get killed. I have a feeling that a lot of them will get killed off come fall of X. But yeah. So who knows? Anyway, so, you, so my point is, is like that's the one thing DC has and will probably always have over Marvel, is that they are not afraid to age to let their characters get older. Metaphorically speaking, I mean, like we're not going to see Old Man Batman and Superman anytime soon. I I promise you that. Anyway, so yeah, um, you guys tell me in the comments below. What do you guys think of that? Uh, am I right? Wrong? Do you guys agree with that? And uh, do you think D Marvel should 
age up their characters and take the legacy route more. Just comment below, let me know, and once again, hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.